to Insomnia True Silver Championship 2. My name is Nimsh and I'm here at, uh, at the couches with Raven and Lothar. Uh, so I want to welcome everybody and guys, how are you doing this fine day? I'm doing really good. I'm excited to get going with a pretty huge round or rounds of Swiss. Can't wait. Yeah. It's 103 players here, so we have a huge tournament. It's a Swiss tournament and I'm really hyped to be here and cast you know, those type of events that are open to everyone and we have a lot of foreign players coming here to UK to participate in this uh, in this event. Absolutely, but like the people watching us right now can see the venue behind us. I, I think there's, uh, well, you can't see all. Well, those it's people. quite dark. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite dark, but there's like a lot of people around us at the very moment. This is Insomnia 57. So Raven, can you quickly give me a good rundown of all the previous Insomnias, starting from Insomnia number one? Uh, okay, get comfortable. Uh, no, unfortunately, I've uh, I've not been going to Insomnia that long. I've been to I've been for a few years, but uh, basically, it's just like the biggest land in the UK. Uh, there's a lot of tournaments across many games, a lot of cool stuff to do, and also just to come and hang out and play some games with friends. So, uh, really cool event. I'm really happy to see Hearthstone's really uh, you know taking off here as well. Just to host a tournament of this size is pretty cool. Absolutely. And the previous Insomnia uh, in December, Insomnia 56, Lothar, your teammate uh, RDU won it. Uh, how was the experience for you? Uh, f for that for that event specifically? Well, I was super happy that one of my teammates won the whole event. It was pretty hectic. He um, had a one win and two losses in the group stage. It was a three-way tie uh, that had to be settled off stream between those two, three players. I was pretty pretty nervous for a nervous situation for everyone. Uh, but in general, I, I think that Insomnia 56 was one of the best organized events that I have been to. and I, that, one of the events that I was casting. So I'm looking forward to this one. And this is the another tournament that's being, that is being done in the Swiss format, which is really making me happy. Because I love those tournaments. It's something that resembles, um, reminds us the state, uh, the games that we are coming from, right, Nim? Yeah, the, games, the standard card games. The standard card games like Magic, like World of Warcraft, the games that we were playing for years, and that was the standard for every single event. And it's really cool to see that Hearthstone makes that leap in that direction because there are no invites, there are no direct uh, buys for the players, which kind of happen in Magic, but let's not go into that topic. Uh, but everyone starts at the same point. Everyone has to go through the day one of Swiss, play the seven rounds, uh, win as much as possible, and one player will go with the seven wins, and then it, there will be a cut to 16 top players which will be playing in the group stage. So let's break down the, the whole format. So right now, at the very moment, uh, what we have for you guys is, uh, is this uh, Swiss tournament, but not only. We have three days of games, uh, $30,000 prize pool, which is yep. uh, a lot of money overall. And uh, as Lothar mentioned, today players will play the Swiss seven rounds. We have 103 players, and only 16 players will advance to tomorrow. Raven, what's happening tomorrow? Yeah, so tomorrow the top 16 are going to be split into four groups and they'll be playing a double elimination groups basically. So there'll be two matches to start off with for, uh, each, uh, for the four players and then the winners will face each other, the losers face each other and then the loser of the winners will face the winner of the losers. Getting quite confusing now. Um, but what will what all that happen is after the whole day, two of each group go through to then create a top eight, which will be on Sunday. Absolutely. So we cut eight players, eight players advance to the top eight and top eight is single elimination on the third day and there can only be one winner. But uh, Lothar, not only Swiss today, but best of five last year's standing. What can you tell me about that? Yeah, it's not the typical last year's standing that you usually see, which would be uh, implementing a ban system. Because for the tournament organizers' convenience and to avoid people kind of, you know, using the system, yeah. uh, we are not using... Avoid things not being too complicated, yeah. I guess. Just to avoid some problems that might happen, uh, our tournament here will not be doing a ban system. So. It will be just bring your free decks, you play it as you're sending. If you win with a deck, you stay with it and you just can win free out with one deck. If not, then you can switch to the other deck. You must switch to the other deck and just play in that simple format, right? It's not Conquest, it's just the old style, less hero standing that we always had. So the, the, one of the last tournaments we've seen with last hero standing was uh, Seed Story Cup, I believe, which was won by JJ versus yeah. Stan Sivka. And, uh, both JJ and Stan Sivka are here today. So guys, for, for you specifically, the players that are here today, we, we not only have the locals, we have a lot of those professional There's players coming. There's a lot yeah. of players. So who's here? 
names. Give me names. I, I, I can bring out my notes. <laughs> yeah, but give me a second. No, no, All no, of no, no. Three names. That would be. There's a lot of players. As you mentioned, there's Sansifka, there's Super JJ, there's Firebat, there's Dog, there's Eco because he's in everything. I know this is an old <laughs> meme, but um, yeah. 2014. Uh, uh, then we have RDU, life coach Ties from my own team. Uh, SK. Then, then we have the, almost the whole SK. So AK Wonder, who won the IM Katowice just last month. Uh, so Legendarian, who was in the final of the last insomnia. Yeah, Martin Creek, Powder. Uh, we have Crane, um, and we, then we have... War Control. Yeah. He's here. <laughs> he's, he's UK. He's UK, and like, I, I know War Control. Like, I, I, cast I know War Control matches. very well. Okay. Uh, <laughs> then we have uh, from Archon, Orange and Zalay, right? Um, Firebat is not from Archon anymore, so it's a Cloud9 uh, member. Well. We have Alki also from Team Liquid. Unfortunately, we don't have Savish, so I think Alki is the sole member of, cl uh, of Team Liquid. Dog is also oh. Liquid. Oh, yeah, right. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> come on, uh, come yeah, on. Sorry. My, my bad. My, my I mistake. think one of the key points as well is, like, in my opinion at least, this is probably the most stacked non-invite tournament we've ever seen, or, or at yeah. least this year, because it's well, like this it, year for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, this year. <laughs> uh, but I mean, like, for for a Swiss opening for a tournament this big with this many players is just crazy. Like, you've got we've got all these big names, and then all the like players where a lot of them are from the UK and want to you know really edge edge out into the scene, and we saw a lot of that in last tournament as well. Absolutely, and not only uh, players from the UK that uh, it's actually not a problem for them to travel here and be at Insomnia, they, they would normally be at Insomnia anyway, but we also have those, uh, let's say, middle tier pro players who are not that known, who definitely also travel to play in this tournament, and we might see some familiar names of people that we casted before in the past, uh, I don't know, maybe Curse, like Fiali, like those guys who, who were uh, winning tournaments and were in the finals before, but we are, they, they not, not really come into the mind for the first time when we talk about the players. Yeah, well, those in every card game you have those really known players that are always yeah. making to the top eight and they're like the legend status. Uh, they have the legend status, right? Not only literally in Hearthstone, but also, you know, as a person. They made it to legend at least <laughs> once. Yeah. They made it to legend <laughs> in life. Talking about the legend <laughs> status, guys, we have the first match Firebat versus Dog. So the previous world champion versus Dog, who is, uh, well, he's been uh, to many tournament finals. He is almost a DreamHack champion, and uh, he did win a couple of tournaments himself. But uh, they are both from the US, so they had to fly here, and there's 103 players. I don't know how many players from the US we have, but uh, we have those two players playing the first round. Yeah, I, d I just saw the, the way the players are presented in those shields, you know, and they start with the, without any light on them, I would love to be in that seat and just make the James Bond <laughs> flip spin. On, on spin with, with a cat in my arms. You know, that would be so cool to see yeah. someone do it. And, and also, just that. a quick note to, to you guys watching that the uh, the images are actually flicked because at first I was like, Do Dog isn't playing Rogue. And then we obviously, when we look at it, yeah, okay. So uh, the images are actually flicked, but Dog is playing Rogue, which is something I wanted to discuss pretty early. He's uh, known as one of the, the the more main rogue players, he pretty much just plays rogue no matter what to any tournament. And uh, we'll see how it's going to pan out in last year's standing as we get into the first game. Yeah, Absolutely. and we start with uh, rogue versus warlock. Look at that. Ooh, what an opening hand for a dog. Just, this just looks devastating. Just the three cards to the left when you think about it. He's playing against Zoo, most likely, with just an unusual big game hunter addition uh, because of the metagame shifts, right? Yeah. And the hand from dog just punches those kind of decks. You can t just play the b double back steps for board control, and then you play sick minion, basically a giant like a handlock. Yeah, he also got a coin, uh, which is very important. So overall, like this matchup, Rogue versus, uh, versus Zoo, a lot of people argue which deck is better, but uh, whenever Rogue gets the coin and gets uh, such a good opening, and <laughs> also picking the fan of knives on top of it, just. Uh, it's just so crazy. To the wound. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and well, the knives in the in the wound for this one. But for for, for the rogue, um, it, it can struggle versus Zoo sometimes. But with an opening hand like this, and this is what rogue's all about, isn't it? When you get the right card at the right time, it's so powerful, and you can just win. But um, it really is just struggle getting those combo pieces together. But as you said earlier, this is insane. This he, is like turn two win. He can. Yeah, <laughs> is he gonna just coin prep? Fan into Van Cleef for a, a for million million. Yeah, <laughs> whatever I would that number go for is. everything. I this think is, is it crazy. actually an AA or a 10 10. I think he only has. Wait, does he have three mana? He has three mana. Yeah, because right? he coined onto three mana yeah. and prepped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah. yep. yep. this is what you do. 12 12. 12, 12. 12 on both yeah, nice. 
Okay, See, we're, good. we are done. Yeah. <laughs> we can go home. Well, this play is really good because there is one out, which is Iron Miguel, but uh, most of the Zoo play only one Iron Miguel. And, uh, even if they like, do. Even if they do, it's still a good uh, a good play overall. Uh, Voidwalker can stop this Edwin, but... Ooh, this is this is kind shit. of funny, though, that, like, the Voidwalker is doing so much work here. Because yeah, he, he just has times. to run... The, he just tanks 12, like, 12 attack. It's huge. Yeah. Oh, oh my oh, god! Okay. What was he needing again, guys? Uh, that is an IMB cowl that's going to reduce that Edwin. That was probably right, the only out, right? Good. The only out in the deck. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Especially because, um, you know, Dog has follow-up. So, as well as the Van Cleef, there's a 3-3 three, three on the board. But now he's just going to play the Owl. And by no means... <laughs> <laughs> that's a shake of the head from Dog. But by wow. no means has Firebat, like, won this game now because he's done that Owl. <laughs> Dog's still in an okay position, but... Um, you know, it's de definitely evened it up a little bit. Yeah, and we see Maligos and Shiv in hand. Like, Lothar, have you had some experience with the, the Maligos uh, Rogue? I, I just wanted to add that the Shiv that was previous in previous end uh, already drawn in the hand tells you that it's a different Rogue deck than, yep. than usual. It's not Iron Rogue. It might not be even Maligos Rogue. It might just, might, just might be Gadget and Miracle Rogue, right? It doesn't have to play the Maligos. But we see the Maligos already in the hand. so. Uh, it's, it's it's quite a difficult type of beast when you uh, compare those decks to the other rogue. Decks are played with uh, oil rogue, they have different type of matchups. An example, I guess Warrior, it's almost unwinnable, right? Unless unless Dog plays like double conceals, an example, which will allow him uh, to build the board and still to give the damage from, you know, just cycle through the whole deck and still de have the Gazette on board, but it's a really tough matchup. But against Zoo, he had the perfect opener. Yep. The Owl changed everything, and now it might be an uphill battle for him because it's, he's not out of the woods. Uh, and I, by not out of the woods, I'm talking about Dog. He was he was having a great situation, and now he's kind of have an uh, has an uphill battle. Well, that's he because uh, he's still the one with the minion on board. There are no taunts, so this two-two is still going to deal some damage next turn. And then he has that Maligos and Gadgetson. So he will be able to maybe just uh, slam gadgets on turn six. But what about the zoo though? Like there is Morganis, so it seems like this is a is it a demon zoo with uh, void colors? Has to be. Yeah, I think it almost has to be. Whenever you bring Malganis into a deck, you just do bring void color, and Pybat's probably just enjoying the void color while we've still got it. But yeah, it's, it's kind of it cool that he's picked this deck because the st more standard zoo or popular zoo that we've been seeing a lot lately is like the sea giants. Um, and anything to take advantage of those, which is probably why we saw the big game hunter in Firebat's yeah. uh, initial draw, because it almost wins you the mirror match as well. So if they play their Sea Giant down, you just insta kill it and then move on. So uh, interesting, he's playing Demon. Um, it's, probably can, it's probably a little bit better in this matchup, I think, because Rogue can just sap the Sea Giants. I mean, I know he can sap uh, Malganis, mm -hmm. but you don't have to mm -hmm. pay for that as much if it comes off a of Void uh, Caller, sorry. Thank so um, ah, it's, it's a real tough one to call at the moment. Dr. Boom's going to be really good next turn, but. Dog's still in a sort of okay position, I would say. He's not doing amazing, but he can clear this 3 3 up with the Eviscerate and kind of just needs to draw maybe a prep next turn to just combine with Gadgets. He used one prep, but he that, that Tomb Tom Pillager draw was really important because that gives him access to the coin, yep. which can be then played with the Gadgets and Auction unit to get the draws going because right now he's kind of run, running dry, right? So, uh, but for Firebat, he's at 17, so it's not great. His hand is kind of clunky. He has two pole, pole overwhelmings, two really huge minions, and one of those can be played next turn. But then, still, six damage is uh, at his face next turn. But one of the was being played. What do you guys think about the uh, decision uh, from Dog to just go face instead of killing the 2 free and trying to protect the 5-4? Uh, it's a really good decision because he has to be aggressive. He's, as I said before, he's running low, low on cards, right? And Firebat has to take um, the board back to stabilize. So attacking to the phase is basically saying, yeah, I'm, ga I'm really interested in those two damage because otherwise I will not be able to close out uh, the game. So it was very important. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the thing as well is Dog is now suffering from, I mean, the early opening hand was fantastic, but it was still very all in. And if the owl was drawn, it was the one card that could be drawn. Well, there was also the Bigham Hunter, right? Yeah, the, oh, that's yeah that we actually, know yeah. of, but normally yeah. as a... Uh, 
as a, as a rogue, you do not expect being a hunter yeah. that often. It, it's yeah. just the trade-off Dog has to deal with now. Of he went pretty much all in and used almost his whole hand to create that bank cleave, and he's still not drawn a sprint, which is really important because uh, I think I feel like that's just the card he needs. And even the sap, it's because he can't play it with gadgets on this turn. It's horrible. I mean, he would love to get the, uh, his tomb pillager killed now by the bomb, <laughs> but the bomb is a fickle, fickle. Yeah. Being, it, and it will not kill a 5 to a minion unless it's a damage as a drake. When, it, when you want the bomb to hit you for 4 is one, a dark day, but also when <laughs> it, it's exactly when it doesn't hit you for 4 and it's so bad. And now he's going to be forced into sap and the problem is if Dog draws another minion next turn, then yeah, okay, you know, he can uh, gadget Zan into coin as, as this Tomb Pillage probably going to die. Mm -hmm. I kind of love it if Fireback kept it alive somehow. <laughs> he will <laughs> never play the coin. Well, so suddenly Firebot is uh, building up a board, being at 15 still, and uh, Dr. Boom is a threat, so it would be hard for Dog to come back, but uh, he has the coin, he has the gadgets, and so maybe he will be able to join to something. Like, if he gets another sap, would that help? Deadly poison? Well, it's something. He can yeah. still cycle, so he can draw a sap, he can draw a... Hmm. Is there anything that... Oh, oh look at that. Yeah, he, he can draw a, You can just yeah. draw a sap. Yeah, sap is huge, actually, because it, it's not about like dealing with the Boom, it's about just uh, being able to not get that damage to face and right now for firebat it's only what four damage on board so he will be able to deal, deal with gadgets but he's racing uh, already at 12. it's very important to deal that damage because he is aware that none of his creatures will be able to live a turn there's no chance Even, unless he has a second blade flurry and just kills everything on the board there will be pro almost almost always a draw with a P.O. or a second abuse of Sergeant or maybe Dagon Dwarf or whatever will just boost the attack of the minions and just trade for the four uh, the rogue minions. So dealing with that phase damage is very important in this situation. Yeah, and one of the important things now is as well that Firebat has Malganis and although, yeah, he's not going to get it from a Void Caller, he has the mana to play it uh, next turn or, you know, whenever he wants to and he's already seen two saps gone and one eviscerate. So Malganis becomes actually very difficult to deal with without some kind of crazy Malagos mm -hmm. there, like AoE or di Direct Burst. There's actually also a lot of Burst, so uh, I think it might be the last turn for Dog. Uh, Firebat with, with the four bombs on board and double PO and uh, Doomguard can just win the game next turn. By well, you PO's two bombs, yeah. you deal additional damage at the end of the turn. Yeah, also. Which would be enough just with the bombs itself. It's really crazy when you think about it. Sinister Strike! That's 3-6. Well, that's quite unfortunate. It yeah. will be one of lethal with 10 mana. Yeah, but oh, it's okay. 9 mana anyway, so yeah. uh, how do you survive now? Do, uh, can you survive with uh, anti killbot or is it still too much damage? Well, you go to 28, then it's 7. From the board, even if you count like double POs, right? It's 7, f uh, 11, 14, oh. 18, 22, 27 with a Doom Guard and double PO. So it's still not enough. But then are the bombs, right? Yeah. I was going to say, if you play Healbot and he attacks face now and then re daggers up, then he can Mally go Sinister Strike dagger next turn. Yeah. And that gives him lethal, right? It's exact. Yes. Exactly lethal next turn. So now but Dog is just all in on him not dying <laughs> to a million boom bots. So, what's the best course of action here? You 11, 14. PO one of the bombs, kill the mini bot, uh, sorry, the heal bot, right? Then you have. 10 damage, 13 damage, 18 damage, 22 damage, and two boom bots will die, which is not guaranteed lethal. Do, do you do you gain more by actually POing the boom bot and going face and trading the juggler into it and just going face with everything? You leave the juggler for the additional damage. Yeah, say. you're only playing one minion though, right? So I'm just thinking if you attack and just ignore the 3-3 three, three and take that raise. Hmm. Well, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Well, you can Malganis. go for the lethal, but obviously the safest play is, is uh, Malganis yeah. as fire, but played right now. Especially after seeing uh, double sap already, right? And then so. eviscerate as well. Yeah. It's, it's becoming very difficult. And he just used the uh, poison from the dagger, so that dagger is just a one attack dagger now. So you're not even really expecting too much of like a big flurry again the following turn. Yeah, absolutely. And Firebat just using the damage here. But what's interesting overall is that this is the first match of the tournament. It's a big Swiss. Those guys didn't prepare against each other. They prepared versus a very big field of players, uh, players that they don't know. Like we've mentioned, a lot of local players from the UK just coming here. And ma maybe not all of them have uh, the, the best decks possible. They just wanted to play and enjoy the, the tournament. 
Yeah, and then we see there that he did actually lose. There was no way for him to uh, sort of draw back out of that game uh, without a prep or something. And even then, it would be difficult. So that's going to be the first game. And what a, what a crazy game as well. Like, it was crazy. So many Boombots, guys. So, so many, many Boombots. A 12-12 Edvin, a top-decked Iron Big Owl, and the Big Game Hunter somewhere still in the deck. A very interesting match. Yeah. Yeah, a good start to a great tournament. Three days of games, $30,000 prize pool. Who is going to be in the top 16? And points. Don't forget about that. Yeah, also points are really important just to qualify for the spring prelims for those guys. First place gets 15 points, second place gets 10. Then we have five and two for the top eight. So it's really um, really a battle not only for, for the money, but also for the points which guarantee you, basically guarantee you a plays on the next qu uh, qualification tournaments. Yeah. And this next match is going to be Firebat Zoo again because he did win with it and this is last hero standing. So if you win with a deck, you hold on to it. If you lose with a deck, that is gone now. So Dog won't be able to play his Rogue and he's moved on to what appears to be a Control Warrior. Yeah, Control Warrior is quite interesting right now. Um, there is a couple of versions that people do play at least Star Seeker. I've seen Deathwing being played as well in Control Warrior. So who would have thought, right? As Deathwing being playable? Yeah, it's a it's a very interesting card overall, especially if you play Patron and they have like uh, double brawl and death wing. If you like, I'm going against three brawls. That's basically it. Yeah, and the the way um the, the way a lot of uh, somewhat more like removal warrior has has been going is where like the only minions it really plays are minions like acolyte and shield maiden and true heart and um, to really just and then all the other cards are just like double slam like just anything double bash and uh, the elise probably as well but it just wants to just effectively just make the game go as long as possible and just answer every single threat your opponent can put out but zoo has a lot of threats that are difficult to deal with as we can see creeper is tough as when it dies it summons two one ones the eggs gonna create the four four on the ruby and when it dies so still definitely you know it's an okay matchup for Dog, but I don't think it's like super oh, strong either. Just wanted to interrupt you and just ask us a question. Why would you pick Control Warrior against a Zoo when you have a Druid, right? Well, Druid, Druid shouldn't be in theory uh, a slightly better choice. Uh, it's tough. I think the Control Warrior is slightly better because um, the Druid like normally does have just a terrible matchup. Um, well, it also depends which Druid is running. We've got to presume he's running mid-range. I think there is a lot of discussion about the matchups, though. Like, I, from my perspective, I feel like both matchups are bad for Dog. Like, basically, both Druid and Control Warrior are bad versus Zoo. But then the de decision is, like, who do you think is better? Like, I've dis I think I was talking with Lothar yesterday about it. Yep. And you Lothar think that Druid actually has an okay matchup versus Zoo? It's 50-50. If you get the Innervate, it's fine. And it's 50-50 it's it, well, if you get the Innervate. If you get an Innervate. But, like, I, I don't really agree. I think, like, Zoo has a better matchup, uh, up to 55 at least. Uh, it was better in the past. Right now, I do agree that at the moment it's not that great, but it's still 55%. The question is, what is the matchup Zoo versus Control Warrior? Is it worse or is it better than 55% to 45? It, it, it's a tough one, but also the, the problem is um, at this point, it won't. It doesn't matter too much. He needs to get that win. And also this pick, he needs to be able to deal with, if he wins, what Firebat's going to pick next as well. Um, and he might want to hold on to, to the, his own Druid for like a counter pick versus, say, Firebat's Warrior. Maybe as Druid as a, uh, normally has a pretty decent matchup versus that. But he's going to get some clear off. It's going to be difficult, though. There's, oh, he's drawn second shield. Second slam, which shield is going to help a lot, actually. I think you keep that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You leave the 2-2. Two -two but it's going to help because he has, like, just a cat and shield maiden. Mm -hmm. So um, probably just a cat next turn and turn after. He can just shield maiden, shield slam pretty much anything. Yep. Um, so it's going to be pretty good. And Firebat has decent hand. He can just, like, just drop everything onto the board if he wants. But he's also got to bear in mind that he doesn't want to... Uh, doesn't want to overcommit into potentially a brawl. Yeah, I think like overall in this matchup, where from the zoo perspective, you want to life tap when you have a chance to be able to always uh, have cards to play. Like basically, I think this matchup is good for zoo overall because zoo just uh, puts minions on board. Warrior has to do something. Then you put minions on board again. You, you draw the cards in the process, and at some point, warrior just runs out of removal. Like you just uh, end up with free cards, and uh, you are not able to do much. Uh, but uh, we'll see. Like the Warrior can still try to s search for value with the uh, big brawls, and uh, maybe draw some cards with Acolyte. What would you do this turn as Dog? That has to be Shields Maiden. I mean, 
you, the only reason why we hold two shields made in this turn is the fact that you want to, p to play shields, uh, sorry, shield block, shield slam, my god. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there you shields go. made in next turn. So if you want to play something else that shields made in, it has to be then the Justy card, but the Justy card trades awfully with the minions here on board. So I was thinking maybe even about Eltrick this turn. Yeah, I think that my, my thing is, uh, the reason I like this Justy card this turn is that if he doesn't play it this turn, he's probably just not going to play it for, the, for another three or four turns. Mm -hmm. And then, he, you know, if he takes the risk now while he's on relatively safe health, um, and then like next turn he can sludge belt your armor, he can shield maiden shield slam, he can BGH if something bigger came out. So this gives him more options now. And I think as soon as you start armoring up with the buffed armor that the sh uh, that True Heart gives, then that's when you need to start, that's how you start winning this game. Cause you just outlast the zoo and you just rely on that removal. And with the sludge belt already in hand, it's gonna be feeling pretty decent. Absolutely. But imagine if you would not even survive the implosion right in the first place. That gives you basically for Firebat, it will mean at least two attack more each, each single turn because you don't lose the Void Walker and you get additional imp, right? It was a horrible, uh, horrible um, trade for for Dog. But fortunately for him, the implosion only rolled two. Well, I think overall True Heart was a bit play, a better play because like looking at the long game, like Shield Mania didn't do that much. It was creating a threat on board, but then it would be stopped by a Void Walker anyway. So uh, if you if you would and you you'd not be able to, to maybe play Harrison Jones. At the yep. And I think Firebat's just going to commit to Doctor Boom here. Um, yeah. Everything else didn't feel good enough, and also played into Brawl quite heavily. Mm -hmm. um, if he just played the two jugglers of being safe and then Brawl, then he's he just gets blown out on the board, and it's going to prove some real trouble for him. So wow. Doctor Boom's pretty nice, but Dog can pretty much he can decide how he wants to answer this as he's just drawn into that brawl, so that's going to be really useful for later on. What if Dr. Boom survives? Does it change anything? Uh, he will be able to do whatever he wants anyway. All right, so he keeps the brawl here, which is, I think, smart overall, because the board wasn't that big, especially after the Big Game Hunter. So uh, you can keep brawl for the future turns, when the zoo actually overpowers you with the small minions. Yeah, well, the good thing is this pretty much deals with the board, because as we can see now, Dog's on 26 life. You know, like, yeah, he's awesome. not going to die anytime soon from even though the boom bots do extra damage from three three one attack minions on the board, right? Power of True Heart, like he's gaining four health every turn. Exactly, yeah, and that's why he needed to get it down on that turn early, just because it was as safe as it was ever going to be that wasn't like end of the game where you've already won anyway or already lost. So that's kind of nice. Probably going to just straight up kill the Acolyte. You always want to reduce the card draw against a, a deck like this. You don't want them to draw because every single draw is another answer to, to your threats. And, Firebat is playing the aggressive deck here. What do you think about going all in in this situation? In Firebat's situation? Just play another knife juggler, play the offensive surgeon, do the massive damage. Just hope for your opponent to not have the brawl. Because it's, it's most likely one of them. It's a tough one. No, it's I more likely two. Like, people play two. Like, have we seen any Contra Warrior with one brawl? Yeah, I think I think two is fairly common. I think the reason he didn't go all in is at the moment he's doing more damage than the armor ups given the warrior. Mm -hmm, but that's not enough. In the long. It's not enough for now, but I think what he wants to see is a brawl or a sweep, you know, some kind of AOE, mm -hmm. and then he'll probably just go all in. Because as you said, at some point you have to t turn up the heat and actually try and win the game. Yeah, you also need to mind revenge. So basically, you need to set up a board that uh, you deal damage till 13 and then uh, just finish the game with one burst. Because the revenge is like start starting to be a sec uh, third and fourth brawl. Well, yeah. this loadup helps, but it doesn't help against the brawl. For that, that I was just right? going to say, if this was one turn earlier, it would have been amazing because you could have played the juggler, played the low third, and then guaranteed a big soft burst for next turn. But now, it still will not be the brawl because you want to play the brawl with removal or with a weapon. So I would be not surprised just to play the shield smiting weapon, yeah. smash one of the minions, would probably be the knife juggler and just prepare for the brawl next turn because you can still gain four life, play a 5-5 five, five minion. What's, what's crazy is there's 10 damage in hand from the zoo yeah. uh, and an owl. So if the belcher goes down, it's just going to get ignored, which is something that Dog's definitely got to think about as he's still not seen an owl. Yeah, and he definitely knows there's one in the deck after last game. So uh, this is going to be kind of rough to see, uh, see how he deals with this. Well, the shield slam uh, looks really good. He goes up to 27, and there's only four damage on board that you can see. So whatever happens, you, f you feel good about it. You still have removal in your hand. You have both brawl and revenge. Single target removal. So it seems like Dog is in a really good position. Wow, this is interesting, because now we can see 
the downside of playing cards like the Game Hunter, Iron Big Owl in a zoo, and just holding on those cards and they're practically useless. Yeah, it's kind of interesting to me as well. I weighed up whether there was a choice of playing BGH instead of the Void Caller there. Mm -hmm. Because the Void Caller won't get him a demon because he has no demons in hand, whereas the BGH represents a good amount of damage. And he's still kind of awkward to deal with, right? You know, it's still going to require an answer. And then, and then you follow up with Void Caller when you have a demon in hand. So I don't know. I thought BGH was okay Well, okay if there. you have BGH, what are you expecting facing this kind of warrior? I would expect the Geddon. That card. Gromash, yeah. Geddon is a possibility. Yeah, Geddon's really not played too much anymore either. So it's, it's just like... It happens from time to time. It depends on the yeah, version. Yeah, I think the only thing is, is like Boom or Grom. Well, there's yeah. also Ali Starseeker that can bring some aid attack creatures later in the game. Oh. Well, usually Zoo is de dead at that point because yeah. it tapped like 20 times. Yeah, I think um, yeah, I think it was fine because this way the, vo the Void Collar gets cleaned up. Uh, probably with the Revenge. Now oh, no, there's no Revenge, revenge Fall because the Creeper, yeah. That makes more sense. By the way, uh, Big Game Hunter in the deck, I think it's mostly against, uh, well, the, the Giants that we've mentioned yep. uh, for the, the Zoo Mirrors uh, versus Mystery's Challenger and the Secret Paladin, which is also a gr really great answer. And um, in most decks, there is something you can uh, destroy with the Big Hunter. Yeah, I think in Zoo, as it is a one of it, it seems fine. Ah, oh. that's even more damage. He could have played the Void Caller this turn. Oh. I, I don't want to be actually great because it would have died to the Brawl, and just that's about it, most likely. Because then you attack into the Pilot Shredder. Uh, sorry, what I'm talking about? Pilot what Shredder? No, 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 never mind. Um, he's just attacking to the. Um, to the Hunter's Creeper and triggers the Brawl with a Revenge and just cleans up the board. That's about it. All right, so Firebot here is just going to continue doing some damage and trying to have, um, well, a, a board, and that board that's uh, resistant enough to Brawls. Uh, it's, more, it's very important to like buff your creatures and keep the Hunter Creepers as well outside of the the weapon attack range, so that even after the brawl, if the Hunter Keeper dies, you have the 1 1 spiders. And slowly trying to grind down Dog, but. Uh, Looks like we're finally going to see a brawl if he's choosing to kill the Creeper. Yeah. Stop the Death Rattle going off after the brawl, and uh, we'll see what survives. Uh, really interesting as well that he's not actually uh, sort of created uh, the bigger revenge by putting him onto the 12 health or less. Um, so his board was relatively safe, and he's seen one brawl now, so that's going to be pretty good. But two Doom Guards in hand isn't fantastic. That's unlucky. I guess you play one. Oh. Mm. Uh, if he would draw any other card in the deck, apart from Void Color, it would be actually think wise to just play the slam the Doom Guard and yeah. just hope not to discard I, the other Doom I Guard. Think he might, yeah, I think he might have had to slam the Doom Guard then. Like, he's just attacked with a 1-1 and passed. Like, is he just waiting on the second Void Caller, do you think? Uh, well, that's one thing. Or just uh, play Mulganis next turn and then try to follow up uh, with Doom Guards. Like, he needs to pressure a bit, but Dog was running out of cards slowly. Like, he only has five cards now. And Firebat is almost in range of the Gromash attack. Yeah, that's true. How do you survive that? I like just playing the Gromash here, revenging, attacking for 10 damage to the face, and your opponent is just like, okay. and. If you don't have a big game hand, then Doc thinks he doesn't have a big game hand because he didn't see it game one, yeah. right? Then he he thinks this might be the best best possible outcome for him. Uh, so he set up a lethal for an extent with the minion that it most likely will not get removed. Yeah. Even, if, even if it gets removed, for it will be for a high cost for trades. And then he can just top deck a weapon and finish the game off. Yeah, and even cards like Slud Belcher, Shield Maiden, difficult to deal with from the mm -hmm. zoo when they've got no board. Uh, we are going to see the Void Caller finally come out, so I imagine it's going to be BGH into Void Caller now. And uh, probably wants to survive next turn and hope he can trade the Void Oh, is he just going to. Oh, he's going to power overwhelm in the Void Caller. It makes sense. He's going to try and pull sense. Malganis so he doesn't die to a weapon. If next he gets Mal like, whatever he gets here is, is good for him still. And, uh, but there are so many cards to win the game, like Bash would win the game for Dog. Um, draw. Weapon, I was any weapon. about tapping. Really? Yeah. I suppose one's the same as three, right? There's no difference between one and three. Yeah, I do agree, actually. Um, you still die to everything that will happen, and you get one more option, right? So, I'm not sure. Yep, so I imagine Malganis is going to come down this Has turn. to. Has to. Yeah, just now you know that there's no option to kill your uh, your character with a weapon, right? And uh, 
there was no execute in the previous turns because the the uh, the options that will be <laughs> talking about execute. there was no uh, <laughs> what Lothar? the execute <laughs> yeah but like uh, it was not in the hand before I started talking it's it's so interesting though because there was no way to deal with Morganis for dog if not for that execute so uh, just shield maiden can be killed here but then on the other hand free health can Firebat still grind it out like there is a lot of health to to grind through but if he gets a, a good defender of Argus. Voodoo Doctor! Oh yes! <laughs> I was and actually I was actually about to say that he might go for the Voodoo Doctor play with the Dark Pedal just to be out of range of yeah. the one attack. Of everything because almost, because now Bash doesn't kill him, Fireworks doesn't kill him in one Death strike. Yeah. So. Death Spy doesn't kill him in one strike, so uh, Go, second Yeah, yeah, you pretty face. you do not value the abusive sergeant over the Doom Guard yeah, here. You yeah. just get the minion down, you've seen a brawl, and also importantly, the warrior's actually only on now two cards, and there's an Elise, but uh, <laughs> probably not she the She has a minion, she has a minion. Some, that's something to trade, right? So do you just go Elise into Shield Maiden and that's it? Like do not armor up. Interesting choice from, from Firebat that he chose to um, heal the Doom Guard heal instead. the Doom Guard instead of trading with the new Doom Guard. Because I was thinking about healing your own face to be yep. out of range of one attack of the weapon. Just for right? one turn, right, yeah. For one turn. And you still have two Doom Guards. There's just a difference between five seven and a five two or two five twos. But and he was able to deal damage to his face. Sorry, five five and a five two. The only difference would have yeah. been Two HP, the health. Yeah, guys, yeah. but you have one turn more to actually deal damage. So I'm really surprised by him not healing his own uh, his own minion. Here. Yeah, we'll see if it works for uh, him. Sorry, him, his own face. Yeah. He's defender of Argus, def definitely. Oh, oh Dark Peddler. Peddler's again. A good, another good draw, actually. If he gets like a Void Walker, that's pretty huge. And he got Shilver. Shilver. That'll do. <laughs> that's an awesome card. Yeah, yep. Shilberry can protect him, uh, and he knows that uh, Dog doesn't have it yet. Like Dog has an empty hand. So he's playing off the top. Well, Shieldberry will protect him from Death Spite and uh, Fireworks, but then Bash. He's still in range of Bash, now you have to tap. If you didn't ha heal your face first, then you need now to tap to just see the options to just get more more pressure in the upcoming turns because you will have to sacrifice yeah. some of the minions right now. Is there anything that deals one damage? Um, Not really. I'm really surprised still by the yeah. fact that he, he valued killing the Doom Guard over, over his own face. Well, on his side, he needs to plow from so much health, so he tried to protect the Doom Guard, I guess. The dog is laughing at the Shield Bear. Ooh. There is a Death Bite, so this means like Fireband has uh, two draws. What's crazy is if he did heal himself, uh, he still wouldn't be in lethal next turn because yeah. of that Shield Bearer. Yeah. That's kind of nuts. And Gang Boss isn't going to be it, so he just has to tap. And Into Defender Vargas. That's not a Defender Vargas, so. Why yeah, not? I'm, I'm really surprised by the fact that he didn't heal. But, yep, yeah, that's it. Firebat loses the second game, and uh, Dog equalized Sirius. 1 2 1. Yeah, now Dog will be able to play uh, this Contra Warrior again versus Firebat's Warrior that we don't know what it is, and Druid. Uh, my guess is that Firebat picks Druid. Yep. Druid versus Warrior makes sense, um, but it's not such a great matchup anymore. This this Contra Warrior versus Druids, like we've seen many times, that Warrior can actually go over the double combo range and just fatigues Druid. That's what you do. Yeah, I think it's definitely the best matchup he's got, though. Uh, what was his other deck? Druid, uh, Warrior, but we don't okay, know which one. Yeah, yeah, because the, pro the problem is like. If it's Control Warrior, well, you're still just relying on a mirror, which is you've just got to save pretty much 50 50. Yeah. And if it was Patron, then the Patron's just not favored, and you need to win. Pat so, uh, Patron is like such a bad matchup versus Control Warrior. But the thing is, it's winnable, but in really odd circumstances. Yeah. Uh, whereas, like, Firebat's going with a Druid because it's actually a decent matchup. And this, you know, again, this is last hero stand in, so it's not like he has to do the Warrior Mirror at some point. If he wins with this, Dog loses Warrior. And then has to go into the Druid mirror. Well, I, I have to say that I would definitely see Druid as being favored in this matchup. Uh, Stan Sivka might disagree, but like all against all odds, I think Druid actually has a has a good advantage. But it's not well, it's not like 70%, it's not 60% even. I would I would say it's again like 55 plus maybe. For the Druid? Yeah. Really? I'm kinda Strongly favoring Detroit. You're those strongly matches. favored to like 60 plus? Yeah, I mean 60. 60 is enough. 60 because you have cards like 
Ancient of Law, you have the Emperor, you have the combo. Your opponent, even if wants to secure the board control, he needs to use weapons, so then... Not necessarily now, because there's Slam and Bash as well. And so right now, like, Warrior has a lot of answers to what you do as a Druid. So if you don't get, don't gain, uh, don't gain the early tempo, he will just outvalue you and out armor you. Yeah, I think this is interesting though. Yeah, I was going to say, you could swipe this, and this normally doesn't look great, swiping a single 1-3. But you want to reduce the card draw down, like we saw in the previous to, uh, in the previous match, sorry. And then um, there's not a lot of great like big board swipes versus Control Warrior at all. And he could have innovated our Emperor, but I think innovating our Ancient of Law next turn is going to be a lot stronger to draw more cards for Emperor to reduce them down the following turn. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. In innovating Ancient of Law here seems like the best option, especially since you will get not only the Force of Nature decreased. Uh, but also the, wild, uh, the living fruits, which yeah. is additional to damage. Yeah, and, combo. and whenever a card, oh wow, both. Ooh, whenever a thing. card Ooh, is zero it. mana, it becomes very, very powerful because you can just cast it whenever the hell you want. Yeah, what's up, Lothar? And just, um, I was thinking a lot about living roots in general. How does the matchup looks? So how does the matchup um, swing? in the favor of Warrior if you play double living roots and it's it, it, it's almost the same situation as with Darnus and Aspirant. Druid doesn't want to um, dilute his deck density by playing cards with low impact, right? And living roots and Darnassus are both kinda low impact on the game during from let's say turn four, right? Yeah. So I'm really surprised that he's playing both living uh, like two copies of living roots. That probably means that he's not playing any darkness aspirant. Well, I think that the most common version right now that's around is like double living roots, one aspirant, double azure drake. So you do come back with the jaws with the azure drakes. Yeah, I think there's actually um uh, the the list I see the most actually just doesn't run aspirant at all. At all. And and the double the double living roots is against aggro and it just guarantees you almost an early living route. Yeah. Uh, by playing two of them. So <laughs> I, I like it and I really like this attack with the shade as well. It's getting to the point where a brawl's becoming sort of half realistic from the warrior in terms of board size. And now what he's doing is presenting two big threats to his opponent. The Emperor just cannot live another turn because that's when you just lose. Uh, but also the shade's going to keep growing as well, so we'll get further out of the damage. So now he has the option, he can on board, he has the whip minion and the weapon to kill one of these guys, but also the Elise does die. And then he has to proc and execute more than likely on the other one to be able to kill oh, it off. There's the shield block and shield slam, right? Oh, that's true, yeah. Shield yeah, block shield block shield slam is quite good. I, was, I decided to choose that the shield block just didn't exist <laughs> in that moment at all. I was like, oh yes, he does have shield block in the middle there. I think you also need to think about uh, uh, Justic are too hard. Not this turn because you definitely need to deal with the board, but in this matchup, you want to play Justic Card as fast as possible. Like in most matchups, right? Yeah. But uh, whenever you start armoring up for every turn, it will be troublesome for, for the Druid. Yeah, and actually, like, if he executes now, I like this, um, because he wants to keep a minion on the board. Imagine if he just traded it in and then Firebat just drops Shredder and Druid of the Claw next turn. Yeah. And you're like, oh my, you know, got no board, you need even more removal. You've just seen Shield Block, uh, Shield Slam. And to be fair, Firebat's seen an execute now as well. So, gotta be feeling pretty good about being able to drop these two guys onto the board if that's what he chooses to do. But I would struggle to not want to do that. Oh, he's going for the Shade. Instead. Yeah, the shade. yeah, the Shade's fine. Well, Shredder would just die to at least attack if um, Dog has a good way to deal with the taunt, right? So yeah, it's just you've just seen shield block, shield slam, and execute. So behind the taunt, you're feeling pretty safe. But you'd always play the shade first because if it isn't dealt with, it grows. Yeah. But the Shredder's he always saw, a Shredder. He saw this, uh, the slams in the previous games, the bashes, the under the weapons, under the execute. Another shield slam because it's still at five uh, armor, so you can just armor up shield slam. So there were at least six outs that guarantee uh, a trade with the with the draw the claw and the minion on board, which doesn't die still. Uh, so I favor the shade of the next armor instead yeah. of the pilot shot in this situation as well. And the thing as well is, even this is cleared up, you can go pilot trade again. And you know, like he just needs to keep minions and keep pressure on the board to threaten the combo as much as possible. Well, that's, why the, that's why the warrior starts playing scared and has to make maybe. Uh, you know, not 100% perfect trades into it. Yeah, well, Doc can be scared already because just looking at those two minions, if you think about Savage or Force of Nature combo, it's enough to kill him next turn. He has 10 damage already in hand, so if he top decks the Savage Roar, it's, that's it. It's end of the game. Do you actually like True Heart coin hero power? Uh, it feels too slow. slow. I think it's fine because... He, he does it to, like, survive. But it's whether the follow-up he's got is he, like, he's almost relying on drawing. Well, he does actually survive the combo here because the combo was 23, and um, 
if you you gain like four health here. I was twenty three. You have. If you do top deck Savage Roar, that's 14, it's 18, 25, right? 1, 25, well, are you plus 2. Li yeah, but like you, you do not play around Savage Roar, Force Nature, Double Living, Groots in hand. Yeah, so of, of course, but the combo is 25 alone. So if, if, you think, if you're a dog, you think like, okay, he has Force of Nature, Savage Roar, that's 23 health. So if I use True Heart this turn, I will be able to survive at least Force of Nature, Savage Roar from this board. And coming forward into other turns, I will be able to gain four health every turn. Yeah, and that's it. It's what we discussed last game as well, where getting true out down, even if it seems a bit risky, can actually win you the game if you get down early enough. Look at that. There's Force of Nature, uh, Savage Raw, sorry, to combo with that Force of Nature. Really interested in the fact that he's using Living Ruse here. I'm, I'm really uh, happy to see that he used the Rap as a cycle, because yep. he knows it's so close uh, to just finish up the game that the draw is more important than the one level group because the Savage Roar brings you more value uh, than keeping just the living groups as a zero mana to damage card. Yeah. So I really like that he cycled with the Wrath instead. So the question is, can dogs survive uh, next turn? Uh, I'm going to go with a very snap judgment of no. <laughs> um, well, he has 16 yeah. damage from hand, right? Never mind the minions. So, and he's only on 19. So he needs any of these minions to survive, and he's fine. Yeah, it looks tough. I think it's at the third time, right? Like, basically, 16 damage from hand, as you mentioned, so... The problem is, how does he even get to the Shredder to kill it? Yeah. That's the, yeah, that's the issue. Like, how do you get through the Druid of the Claw and kill the first part of the Shredder and then hope for Doomsayer? No you, way. You can't even pull yourself in a... Like, to activate Revenge. If no. you attack the Druid of the Claw, you go down to what? Well, 15. You go to 15 and you can't activate the Avenge. So kinda sucks. Uh, you can double Whirlwind maybe with like Fire war fire Works and Revenge, but does it change anything? Actually, that would change things. Like you play Fire Works and then you play Revenge, but you will not be able to armor up. So you can kill Shredder. <laughs> but, but now it doesn't even matter as we're going to see that combo we all know and love from the Druid. And they're uh, going to just burst a hell of a lot of damage. I don't even want to count how much it is. But Fiber is going to take this game with the Druid. And now Dog is going to fall back on his own Druid. So uh, we're going to see probably a Druid Mirror match. The decks might not be identical, but when you build this deck, uh, there's probably like, what, 28, 29 cards that are exactly the same? Yeah, what, the are, what, are, lineup? what are really the differences? Like, as Lothar mentioned, sometimes you can play like one. It's like Harrison, like Harrison as well. Like, Harris, I yeah. put Harrison yeah, in, Harrison, right not. A like, Belcher, yeah. Maybe, right Sylvanas, there. maybe? Or like. Play Sylvanas. Ancient of War. Depends what, yeah. you, like, what, depends what you think about Swiss. Like, how would you prepare your Druid specifically? for Swiss, for seven rounds versus 103 players. I think it's really uh, interesting scenario as well because you have a match like this, you know, Firebat versus Dog, easily two of the best players in the world. But then like, as you talk about Swiss, there's, there's a lot of people who will turn up um, who are just playing for like, maybe not taking it as seriously. I'm playing some like interesting different decks, but you still need to beat them. And like, yeah. if you lose to like a sort of like funky deck, then you know, it's still a problem. So you do have to build it uh, in a certain way to try and cover all your bases and we did just see an ancient of war yeah dog so there's one of the cards that isn't My like it's god. common but not super common that opening from dog an innovate and a wild grow sometime but by, by the way i love those graphics made by oh it looks Trusa, sick doesn't uh, it yeah right by multiplayer here and there's some yeah awesome to see like the, those clash of malfurion versus malfurion it's like street fighter all over again <laughs> I'm, I, I'm sure that subtle somewhere giggles inside so is definitely happy about it Okay, so Ancient of War, I guess, uh, what does it tell us? It Does it tell us something else than just there's a one-off? Well, like, it's a um, good card against Zoo. Historically, people were playing one Ancient of War in the Sylvanas version, but... Uh, yeah, like I, I think at the moment, the Ancient of War is uh, fairly common. It wouldn't like surprise me to see someone play it. And there's nothing that we've been shown that gives any idea that Dog's bringing like, a Taunt Wall Druid or anything like that. We've not yeah. seen any of the cards that scream, Sentry. oh my god, it's actually just Taunt Ramp Druid. Uh, so it seems pretty standard so far. It's really interesting to see who's like, who's got like the better hand. It's kind of weird. Firebat has more more of a, like a reactive hand, but can still curve relatively well with the shade into Shredder into Druid to of the Claw. Um, but Dog just uh, has ramped and does have the Innovate as well to boost that yeah. even quicker. So it's got, I think it's a relatively close one because even this uh, these Keeper of the Groves can deal with the Ancient of Lo uh, Ancient of War, sorry, to a certain extent and reduce the health down. This turn is awkward though. 
It, 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 actually, it's not when you think about what's your follow-up. Because if you play the Bikim Hunter, and I think in this matchup, it's really important to just deal the damage as, yeah, as possible. Yeah, you just want to chain minions. You just want to swing the, the, the HP in, the, in your favor as soon as possible. So if you play um, the Bikim Hunter, your opponent uses the coin so he can't play the Keeper of the Grove. And then you have to innovate to play Ancient of War, which protects your big game hunter, right? So your opponent is forced to play Keeper of the Grove to kill the big game hunter, but then he doesn't use the Keeper to silence the Engine of Law. So even if he silenced the Engine of Law, then you still have the big game hunter. Yeah, so it's that really game hunter was, was cool. Uh, but on the other hand, he will not have the big game hunter for a Bastard of Dr. Boom in the future. But it's only one off, right? Yeah. The Druid has only one target. Probably. We've seen Gara play two of them, but... Oh, uh, that's Gara. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. we Wait. can remove Gara from there. Gara plays two Dr. Booms? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> if you would be able to, he would play. That's why he I played. I think everyone would everyone play two would Dr. Play Dr. Booms. Dr. Booms. Booms. That's why Gara is playing Kelfuzad to be to bring back Dr. Boom. Oh after he dies. God. So he's gonna go for the Ancient of Law. No, tr no real surprises there. As you said, the uh, the big game hunter did die, so there's no need to yeah. Uh, there's no need to protect. Play Ancient of War. Uh, you'd won the card draw, and as the uh, the nice whistle there from Lothar, the uh, Ancient of War, this number two was drawn. So that's uh, that's kind of cool to see some pretty heavy opposition, even in the Druid Mirror. If you run out with those silences early, it pretty much just locks out combo most of the time. Yep. Or at least buys you a turn. Yeah. By the way, there are a lot of Rios when yeah. you see the match tickers, right? Uh, almost every single one is like Rio, Rio, Yes, that's Rio, AK Wonder. We just saw Spo pop up then. So. Last hero standing, guys. It's yeah. more likely to Rio and last hero standing if you are really good with the Zac, if you are prepared for the tournament can actually win versus opposing lineups. I like last year's standing more than Conquest because it builds up some form of um, story for a player. A character. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, I brought this new rogue that plays backstabbing preparations. <laughs> yeah. And I just free out everyone. Oh, also, like, just you just uh, succeed with the deck and uh, you can continue playing with it instead of like, oh, I just brought this great deck and I won and, uh, and now I have to, to change it. This turn looks really interesting. He's going to throw the shade into the 5-5. Five five and although, you know, I, I understand you want, you want to keep the Druid board empty, but I think, like, with the sheer volume of minions he had available to him, and next turn he could have Keeper of the Grove hero powered, that, uh, maybe there was an option to leave that alive and let the shade grow a little bit more, but probably getting a little bit afraid of Big Game Hunter. And uh, I do like using the shade when you can. Well, he saw one of the Big Game Hunters, right? Oh, that's uh, true, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of surprised that he traded off. Yeah. But then trading with the 5 3 remains of uh, the Ancient of Law are kind of awkward because you have to use a hero power, yeah. right? And trade a minion with two attack or trade two minions. So I like the trade with the 5 5, but at the same time, he, uh, the shade would have been awesome against Ancient of Law, but you have two keepers. Right? Yeah, and, and I also think actually Firebat having zero combo pieces made that trade more effective. Mm -hmm. Guys. Because if you had combo, he could just push the damage. But there's a second inch Second inch of war and uh, you double silenced keeper. one. <laughs> <laughs> double keeper and board. Rips really. IMB Cowell off the top. But it's like, you were not <laughs> expecting this. How what is this? Is this San Sivka playing instead of Firebat? He has <laughs> yeah. an additional silence. And you're not playing Ancient of Wars. Uh, sorry, um, Ancient Watchers and Eerie Statues. Yeah. That would be interesting. Good card, man. A ninja Iron Bigao just out of nowhere. Well, he did draw it versus the rogue game. Yeah, exactly. Um, this is going to be a, a tough turn, though. Can Savage or Herb? Well, Can it's help? still only six damage. Yeah, so you have he's to still sacrifice short. five damage to the face, trade both keepers, and you can only play Druid of the Claw, which kind of dies to the attack from the Ancient of Law. So is it time to Torison to force trading? Uh, I, I think he might just have to Savage draw and play Druid of the Claw here. If you leave two five attack minions up, like you, you just lose, but I suppose if you do, if you attack face, then you're dead to combo regardless. So can you lord to like try to draw into combo faster? Yeah, I, I think you just you can't leave two five attack minions on the board, especially when one's got ten health. Because the problem is, there's a chance that if you don't attack in this turn, the dog clears the minions off. Yeah. So then, so then how are you going to kill the ten health? Yeah, yeah. You kill it while you can, or else you know you can blend yourself in a lot more trouble. So. But now swipe and keeper seems like the best possible clear for this, right? And then you still drive five damage to your opponent's face. Otherwise, what you would like to do is maybe just silence and play that Nasus hero power and go to face with everything. I, I like this. It puts uh, a good amount of pressure on the board. And he's getting to the point now where actually Savage Raw just wins him. Or just the Force of Nature next but it, turn. If he would have 
kept the swipe, could have just played Force of Nature swi swipe That's next true. turn, right? So yeah, it's sort of like the same to a certain extent, isn't it? Because he used swipe and keeper of the grove, or he could have used Force of Nature. You know, but you use shot. Keeper of the Grove as a silence, so you don't care yeah, oh, about yeah. the remaining body, so you still have four damage in your hand, which you otherwise, in this situation, would not have it, right? So. Yeah. In this situation, it's like still 12, right? So it's, it's only six off. damage. If you would have this wipe, you would have been able to kill off his opponent. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, if it's silence. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the game is almost over. Just. Um, just explain to our viewers right now, this is one of the matches we're showing from the first round of Swiss. And this means that 103 players, they're playing at the very moment. That, that's why we're uh, showing those, those match tickers, the scores. The matches are finishing as we speak, so it, it's obviously not possible to show all the matches at the same time. But we will be going round, round, by, one, uh, round by round, seven rounds total today. And um, we'll be showing the standings, I think, after each round. We should finish it. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. But yeah, we'll, we'll probably be showing them at the beginning of round two for an overcap. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there we go. And that's going to be the, the game sealed. The Druid Mirror, pretty volatile matchup that a lot of people believe is decided from the early draws. But as we saw then, both players got very d different opening hands. Mm -hmm. And it was still ex like still quite close. I think the Ancient of Wars, though. I think, I think it was fair. Dog has an <laughs> advantage from the very beginning. Yeah, right, I, I right? would say that Dog was favorite just by seeing the Innovate and Wild Grove and double, uh, sorry, three seven mana drops. That, those were Yeah, I mean, like w that's oh. what I'm saying. Like Once we saw the Ancient of Wars come into play, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it locked the game up. But before that, just on opening hands, I still thought even it was still quite close. Because you have to go all in for that Wild Growth Innovate. Tempo um, BGH so decided the game. Yeah, definitely. Tempo BGH into a wrath. And now it seems like Dog positioned himself really well in the, the last matchup, which is Druid versus Contra Warrior. Dog has to, st Dog has to stay with the deck. And then from Farbat, for the first time, we see this Contra Warrior. And there is a Wild Grove already for the Dog. Yeah, I think what's kind of interesting here is the Double Ancient of War probably isn't going to be as good versus the Control Warrior, just because they run so much removal that it's not quite as, like, they don't really care about a Taunt Wall because they're not really trying to just straight up kill you a lot of the time. They're just removing the minions. The only thing it does do, actually, is provide a two additional big threats that you do require the removal for. So you know, a bit of a double-edged sword there, I think, for Dog. Absolutely. All right, so what do you guys think about the hands? Uh, from Dog, we have the Wild Grove, which uh, is already quite nice, and the Innervate Horse <laughs> Coin is great. What about <laughs> Farbat? I'm just giggling always. <laughs> Every single time someone has a Wild Grove, Innervate, and an Emperor, I'm and just coin. Like <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, it seems quite good. Uh, also, just join Keeper of the Grove. Nice. I would say you, you might just want to play you might want to think about playing Ancient of War this time, but if you play Emperor, then you then you you can play the Ancient of uh, Ancient of War next time anyway with a coin. Yeah. yeah. But it's just easier to remove the Emperor, right? Yeah, definitely. But then, like, do you want to have a five ten or or five five on board? Ten five. Ten five. Oh, root. <laughs> After the riot. Do it. And then he died to hey, Slam Bash. Hey, it's like the, the lowest odds that he has, um, like the additional removal now. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Five there's minutes. no execute. And oh, there's the execute. Well, like, Second you time to today. Say it. It's only the first match, and i already done it twice. It's pretty good. Calling we have all weekend. All the time. We're going to keep score on this, Lothar. We're going to try and beat you in this game. Have you have you got the Lady the other in Lothar already? No, I didn't have time to play. So you World should War. probably play Warrior then. It's uh, like when you play Warrior from one to twenty, Execute is a really good ability. <laughs> uh, and I will be saying like, "Oh, my Execute is still on cooldown, and it's <laughs> fun." <laughs> Off the top. Uh, when I uh, I actually logged in to try and unlock that portrait, and I had a level nineteen character ready to go. Yeah. Wow! Back to do one level. <laughs> I was like, "Yes!" Look at that, Sylvanas. Easy. Yeah, people play Sylvanas. Interesting. Called Both it Ancient of Wars and a Sylvanas. Yeah, that's that's like a version you can play for the Swiss tournament. It's basically you should be okay versus uh, in the mirror, because Sylvanas is a good card versus mirrors, and especially versus control decks if you ex expect more control. Yep, it's basically just generating more of an all-round deck as opposed to being very good at one thing. You just want to like cover all your bases, and Druid's definitely a deck that can do that because it's so well-rounded anyway. And then you can just add in a few more cards that pretty much win you the hyper-aggressive matchups a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, which is what Druid struggles with uh, mostly. 
All right, so for Firebot, the good news is that he has the true heart, so he will be able to get the hero power uh, early. Maybe not next turn, but uh, in, the, in the two turns, hopefully for him. Yep. It looks like Dog's probably wanting to remove this 5-5 without running Sylvanas in. He wants to keep that threat, and because the, uh, the Death Bite isn't on charge 2, it cannot be killed next turn just by the Death Bite alone, because it won't prop the Whirlwind effect. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if Dog just maybe even goes for a swipe wrath or something on the uh, on the five five to see what he can uh, see, see, see what he can draw off there what about just using the keeper here as well oh, i like the cycle okay and then again again like we said earlier when the match was the other way around swipe against control warrior just use it to kill a minion sure you yeah, know you're yeah, not going to get like a big swipe mod off just yeah. use it as four damage removal and poke one to face before armor smith has dropped yeah basically yeah. Shield Maiden. Normally, Shield Maiden and Shield Slime is so good, but in this situation. Yeah. I'm going to replace your 5-5 five five with a 5-5. Five five. <laughs> it doesn't seem like a good deal. Yeah, somehow I've ended up the, the wrong end of this. He does have Bash, though. He did have to attack in, though, and this is getting pretty important as Firebat's health drops to 17. Um, and whenever you're around the mid to even high teens health against Druid, you fear for your life. Yeah. Uh, combo can come at any moment. Especially because he's seen Emperor. Mm -hmm. So it could be even easier. He could pull double combo. Even so A lot of the time, even combo hero power changes everything and you know, can finish up a game. So. Ooh, what a, st <laughs> what a heads up game. Uh, sorry, a play by Fireblood. He replaces his own, own weapon to destroy the Sylvanas to deal the one additional damage that he needed just to play a 5 drop. Yeah, I think that worked for him pretty well because right now, just uh, Shield Med and Shield Slam, and he still has the Bash in hand. So overall, far about, like, I agree what you said, uh, Raven, that it's a really fine line how much help you can get in this matchup as a warrior. But honestly, if you don't go below specific threshold, you just win. Yeah, yes, exactly. And I think what was good here is that play looked kind of weird uh, at a glance because the five damage you do with the second charge of Despite kills a lot of the Druid minions. As we can see, it would have just killed this 5-5. Five -five. But Firebat did that because it was a clean kill on Sylvanas. He gets to play the five drop. And also, as you said, he can play Shield Maiden, Shield Slam next turn. He has answers to these follow-up minions. Uh, whereas if he didn't have any more removal and just had the Death Bite and the Bash, I think he might have actually gone with Bash that turn to then yeah. follow up Death Bite to almost guarantee a kill on a minion the next turn. Yeah, definitely. Just Bash Armor Up would be five extra health. Yeah. But uh, for now, it looks... Uh, Good for Firebat, I have to say. He can just easily clear this board and um, use the shield slam, attack one, attack the, the other one with the weapon. Get yeah, I mean, say that, but I think the follow up of Keeper the Grove into Shredder next turn is going to be pretty good. You can just silence off the Belcher. Um, the Control Warrior doesn't really run too many taunts. Um, and also, you're representing two minions. Uh, uh, the Shredder, at least, is quite uh, difficult to deal with. Um, and it's going to set up, or at least set up combo. Um, we can see that there'll probably be an armor up past the combo range, especially with the bash in hand. But still, I think you do have to make the play. Oh, he's not silencing yet. Okay. Yeah, we'll play the Druid of the Clown yeah. and the Shredder. First. I like this. Yeah, follow up later with silence and then go. Oh, just trade, of course. Double bash. Well, this is a great removal. Yeah. Six armor to the face. To your own face, I mean. Six armor to face. Yeah. The opposite of saying. Fuck. All right, Shredder, who is piloting you? Who was the, who was the guy? Oh, it was just Falnus. Okay. It's actually not that bad. It's kind of not that bad for, for both, right? Because a 1-1 one, one's still a 1-1, one, one, but it does draw Dog an additional card, which is still good for Dog. So yep. kind of like a, a, a mediocre sort of a, a mediocre drop from the Shredder there. Yeah, and Farber is running out of cards. Uh, he will have that True Heart to be able to grant him six armor next turn. But slowly but steadily, Dog can overpower him in a couple of turns. Dog with the another engine of law can secure another part, uh, another another steam roll in his end. So that's really important for him to, uh, to get that going. And, and if he really wants to, he can either wrap down the Belcher or just silence the Belcher. Um, it will mean that probably both his minions do trade uh, next turn for Fiber. But still, I think the key is to just chain drop minions and. As you said, Nymph, the, the warrior's running out of cards. Uh, so he's, that means he's running out of removal. So, you know, it's only going to be a matter of time before he uh, bef before he just can't remove these minions anymore. And then you follow up with combo and finish the game. All right, so Farbat's going for the True Heart double um, hero power. Which means he has to. That's the best turn to do it. Yeah. 
and probably trade into the 5 5 and go face with Belcher. It's 31 HP. If you would kill the keeper of the Grove, does it give you that much? You leave a 5 5. I wouldn't mind the kill on the keeper actually. Hmm. Not that bad actually. Yeah. She wants to be super safe, just reduce that 3 damage, but you just wonder like, you reduce 3 potentially 5 damage from combo. But you've lost a 5 5 yourself, whereas you could have traded into Keeper, only dropped 2 damage, and then uh, dropped 3 damage to be it, sorry, and then uh, still be okay. Dog going for more cycle there. Yeah, I really like that a lot. He can build up the board, he can use the Lemon Roots to kill the, um, kill the Belcher, and still play at 2 drop, which allows him to, give, to get maximum. Maximum value from Savage Room, right? I think like overall with Living Roots it's better to even play it as minions, especially because your opponent has uh, only three cards in hand. Do you guys know what's the flavor text of the Living Roots? No. Two, two out of two trends wants you to go for the trends. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. 10 10 verified. <laughs> it does work most of the time though. This is such a rough spot to be in because like. This is not a board you really want to brawl, as it doesn't on its own represent a lot of damage. But when you think that's an extra, what, like for 12 damage from combo? 26 overall. Yeah, he has to go for the brawl over playing Dr. Boom. <laughs> Feels bad. <laughs> Feels bad, man. <laughs> you always want to play Dr. Boom, right? Yeah. Well, it's still at 40 HP. That is just huge. But now Dog will just drop everything on board that he can do, uh, what, what, what he can play, what represents a body, just to have those minions available for the Savage Room next turn, right? Yeah. Well, Wait, what did, what did he draw from the Yeah, is this screen the not drawn? Because he already had Living Roots. He right? had Living Roots, he didn't play it last turn. It's a my mystery card. Um, am I missing something? No, I think we, ha we just uh, haven't seen the card that he got. So he played Azure Drake and then he attacked Fate. But the animation is still going, so it's interesting. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see what he plays. He like probably will play it right now. We have to assume yeah. he has oh. an extra card. The card's just shifted. Yeah, there is a card in his hand, unless there is a problem with the system, but... Uh, I don't think so. Doug doesn't seem to be worried about the situation. He's not flapping his hands, so as uh. the players would do. Oh, it was oh. Lothab! It was no Lothab time. all along. Okay. Well, if not those meddling kids. <laughs> all right, oh, Grimash wow. to deal with the 4-4. Big Game Hunter will be helpful, as always. For As for now, we only saw Big Game Hunters killing Grimashes. Oh, wait, no, one Big Game, one Dr. Boom was killed. Yeah. So it seems like Dog is just overvaluing uh, Farbat. Farbat still has the Dr. Boom in his hand, but uh, he will not be able to deal with those minions, and uh, Dog just steadily going into... Yeah, I, I wouldn't even mind just slamming Boucher here. Would you? I mean, it's so yeah. safe just to not play anything, because you present 11 damage on the board. Yeah, uh, with true. With the combo next turn, if, let's say, no minion will be um, deleted raise from the board, right? Then it's 7... 9, 11, 11, 15, 17 damage just from the board. 7 damage just from the board. Yeah. Then you add 14 on top of that. That's 31. And you still have minions in your hand. So if you overextend to Brawl, a second yeah, one. I, I was just trying to work out whether if you put Belcher down, it actually gets yeah. you the extra damage for lethal next turn. Yeah, but do you want to risk that if yeah, you're Yeah, all in. Be risky, okay. Love. Okay, never mind then. <laughs> Let's go. I think it actually Dog misplayed then. <laughs> Should have oh, played I, I never said that. <laughs> Don't just throw that misplay word around like it's nothing, Lofa. Yeah, I think like Belcher would actually be enough um, to win the game. I mean, he does have the two from the Living Roots as well. So uh, that is some extra damage. And what is he going to draw? And swipe. Oh, he can innovate swipe. Yeah, he can innovate he can swipe, but is, innovate is swipe. it enough though? Like right now on board there is what, 7, 11 plus 6, 17 plus 14. Is 20, 31 plus swipe is 35. How much damage there is? 38. So free, missing free damage. Well, I wasn't counting at all, so I'm just. Ju uh, yes. Yeah, I, I, I think like, like yeah. I think it was just a rough estimation, but I think he's like uh, free, free damage of lethal. Yeah, I mean, if he had lethal, dog would have locked it in. Um, 
And that's that's the way I normally judge lethal. <laughs> oh, uh, players of this caliber. <laughs> players of this caliber. It's, I mean, it's like if Dog didn't start locking that combo in, it's not lethal. Absolutely. But, but like I think like the easy way to count lethal when you uh, look at the Druid games is basically combo is always 14 from hand. Uh, just vanilla 14. Then you look at the number of uh, attack on the minions and you add two damage. Hey, come on, names. I could count. <laughs> it's like Raven. No, no, Raven. Raven. I feel like you I'm getting taught how to count. Bro. I feel Bro. like I'm getting taught how to count. Where's the whiteboard? <laughs> Let's talk about math. That's for a segment there. later. Okay. Let's count, take the counting calculus. Counting with nymphs. Calculus. So good. We actually had a, a math segment with Walthar at Affinity, right? At the analyst desk. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Patreon was the thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And me and Soto were just loving the deck because, you know, there were so many possibilities and you had to count so fast just to have the legal available. Yeah, Druid Lethals are easy to count. So, is that a lethal now? It should be, right? <laughs> there's 28, and there's 27 on, uh, on health. So I believe there's 28 damage from, from after the lesson with Nib, which I feel like my math is pretty on point now. 12 I'll plus 7 <laughs> plus 4, 19, 23. You remember there's a Belcher in the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't even count the Belcher. I was just looking at damage. The Belcher, Belcher is actually taking a lot of damage because if you if you go for a combo, you'll oh, have to no attack. Oh, he either. You have to attack the Belcher with, let's say, a uh, hero attack and the slime to deal 5, and then Living Roots the 1-2. The yeah. So it's actually you taking 7, seven damage. 11, 25. Go, low, five, go. Yeah, you're left with 25, so it's not deep. 7 11, um, basically, I think it's uh, 23 damage to face. Yep. So he's again a bit short. So, do you, do you think you actually follow up with just the Ancient of War and ignore uh, Dr. Boom here? Yeah, you, uh, you just ignore Boom, push that little bit extra damage, and then hope it's going to be enough next turn. I'm quite interested that he did play the Living with this team, just instead of dealing the one damage with the slime and just, you know. Pushing it with just to keep the living room still in his hand to do the two damage from his hand. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Just valuing the minions and now. Um, Shield block pushes him back out of range again, right? Yeah, but uh, the thing is, like, he cannot deal with Lothab and it's quite sad on his side. So right now, there's how much damage is there? There's 7 plus extra 4, 11, uh, 25. The same as last time. Yeah. Yeah, so like Firebat is slowly escaping the range, and uh, if he's able to deal with the minions, is this enough to play it this turn? That's eight. Nope. One mana off to be able to play Triple Clutch Charge as well. <laughs> so it's funny. No, 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 you, you could just innovate. In innovate. Yeah, you could innovate through the car. Yeah, well, I'm really surprised that he's not innovating. Yeah, three minions is fine. Wait, like Innervate Druid of a Claw and Combo? Like, I, I said, like, he cannot play Druid of a Claw and Innervate Combo. Oh, you said that? Oh, on the same turn, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I thought you meant this turn. I was like, I would have Druid of a Claw and I would charge. just play Charge sure. Druid of the Claw right now. Oh, yeah. Double Acolyte. Probably not when he wants to be playing at this point again. So now it's 24, 28 damage. So it's still too off. So <laughs> it's very unfortunate for Doug that he didn't opt to play the additional minion for two turns in a row because that still gives fire. Well, it's 29 small... with hero power, yeah, right? 29, actually. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Speaking hero power. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's right. Like forgot about the hero power. Feels even worse. It's exactly 29. One damage off. Someone, somewhere in the world, in somewhere in Sweden, there's a person lying in the bed that just wakes up and says, One of the evil. <laughs> they just feel it. All right, so you cannot, you don't have lethal here. What do you do? Like those acolytes of pain, they do present some threat in a way that uh, Firebird will be able to draw cards, but you can't do much I, about them. I think just uh, to be honest, even though I would have liked it last turn, I think just Druid of the Claw Charge would be fine this turn and go face because the acolytes, the other than like a revenge, aren't gonna draw more than one card each because they have to go into the five turns. What about twenty nine to face? No, I don't like that at all. There is no Alex Strauss we, uh, in this deck. I'm worried that we've miscounted this. No, we didn't. No, it's, we didn't. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I was just a bit like, you know, so basically my theory of someone locking in this kind of combo isn't that it's always lead. I think it's absolutely oh, no. fine. It's absolutely fine to go face here. Like there is no threat from Warrior and uh, you just put Warrior on one. And, yeah, and, have and, and he has five from hand. Yeah. As well, he has Druid of the Claw, Charge, Hero, Power. Yeah, him. definitely. So, and he's seen Shield Block the other turn as well. Ooh, bro, a little too late. 
Yeah, so Roll does nothing, it's a blank. Um, is there anything that far but he just he needs to continue drawing cards? And then he needs more armor anyway. Revenge can work here. Um, free damage. Six, but he's well, still he's dead. able to. We can clear. He can clear, we but can armor still dead to the, the claw and hero power. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, this this game went down to the wire. So we really saw Doug's patience actually. Like he never overcommitted to the board, not once, and just like play, played as if Firebat had brawl in his hand from turn one to yeah. turn like twenty. Like just That's never true. overcommitted. And although we we were saying, oh, you should have just drew the claw cards, doing this, done that. Like just being slow and steady actually does, you know, can work out. And um, you know, we were saying earlier about the charge. It's like it's not a misplay. It's just a different approach to playing the match. Absolutely. I just like the fact that. To, to, to play the Druid of the Claw because it's one of the minions that's actually not overextending by much because it deals the damage at the same turn as Yeah, yeah, right. you're already gaining from it that I agree turn. with the Ancient of War, with the second one, with the Doctor Bond, was kind of looking like an overextending to a Brawl. But other than that, congrats to Dog, 3 2. Absolutely, I think like what well, definitely, uh, well, I think Dog was thinking about Deathwing as well, possibly, because this is what you have in those decks. Specifically, Firebat has almost no cards in hand, so. Then it definitely gets the possibility, and if you overcommit and, and don't seal the game and don't have anything in hand uh, to, uh, as a follow-up, then definitely can just uh, destroy you and definitely kills you super fast. Yeah, the dog takes a pretty big win there. I mean, round one of Swiss, you get matched against Firebat. Pretty rough, but you know he did take the win, which is huge. But bear in mind as well on the on the other side of that with Firebat, this this, this is only round one. There Absolutely, are seven rounds. And I think yep. it's actually good for him overall uh, because. Well, not only one versus Firebat, but the thing is that when you play a Swiss tournament, you have to think about tiebreakers. And, in, and, if, and you play, if you play against a local player who just goes 0 free, your tiebreaker will be terrible. But if you play versus Firebat, you do expect Firebat to go at least with the six wins or five wins during the seventh round. Or 0 2 drop. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. Hopefully, Firebat will have a good oh run. God, Lothar's cursed him. Yeah. Uh, zero I was zero cursing zero the execute, so now Firebat is screwed. <laughs> Wow. Well, we'll probably not see Fire by the next uh, next match, so he will quietly win it easily. But uh, just like looking at the uh, the matches that we've seen overall, or we haven't seen, but we've seen uh, the the scores. Like there was a lot of pro players playing against each other. We had the Orange versus Fali. Fali, the second place at uh, DreamHack Push Napoca, mm -hmm. and the uh, second place at Infinity. We had Indiren versus Modern Leper, yeah. um, UK's Modern Lepers, also a great player. A lot of those guys, they are actually facing each other. Well, yeah, it's, bound to it's happen. meant to be. Yeah, right? it's bound to happen. And also, the good thing about Swiss is, next round, everyone who's won a match will play someone else who's also won a match, and then everyone who's lost will also play someone who's lost. So, going something like six, so uh, six one, like seven zero in Swiss is going to be huge because yeah. you've literally had the hardest road throughout the whole tournament. It's not game. like in a single elimination bracket or double elimination bracket, but it can just dodge some good players exactly, because yeah. you had a better part of the bracket because there was no one in your uh, in your way to stand like you know uh, it wasn't a high yeah. skilled player, player that was standing in your way like but in swiss best it's players, most best likely players. that you will face at least one two three maybe a high tier players that are playing in the swiss tournaments because every single time you're playing against a player that is winning but it's only randomizing being then they're being counted the tiebreakers, right? So you have a better chance of playing someone someone better. Definitely. And what I also really like is that if you get to the top 16, you're not only advancing tomorrow, you're also locked in in the money. So for many players yeah. who traveled here who, who are not uh, on teams yet, uh, just uh, they will be able to win at least uh, 600 plus dollars if they get to top 16, which uh, should be enough to cover the costs of the of the travel. Well, it's UK, so I want to be so. By <laughs> come, on. <laughs> come on, it's fine. But yeah, it's 625 dollars for the top 16, for the top eight. So if you advance uh, on day two, you get 1,250. Yeah. And then you get the points also because the top 16 doesn't get the points, but from the top eight you get the points. Yeah, about it's great that you're getting some monetary prizes. So if you go if you go to the day two, you feel like, hey, I made it. I. I achieved something really important because there's a lot of great players here in the tournament. And um, I think like we had a second game prepared, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure what the status is. This game actually took a while, so it's possible that the second match finished. Like uh, what we will try to do for you guys uh, today, like in Swiss, it's a bit weird. Like we can't really go from match to match 
because it's like the first match finished, but the Swiss round is still going on. So we might need to have a break before, and before we select the match from round two, we need to finish all the matches from round one in Swiss. So th what we will try to do, we will always have a second match a bit delayed, and we'll try to jump into it if we have like a quick 3-0, or maybe just a quick 3-2 uh, as well, depends on the players. So we'll have those second matches prepared, but if the match is taking a bit more time, then we'll not show you the second match and we'll just uh, wait a bit and then jump into round two of Swiss. But uh, for today, there will be a lot of hearts in action, a lot of great matches. And uh, in the beginning, I, f I think we will just select most of the, the big matches, like the big names playing against mm -hmm. each other. And then when we go into like midday, uh, finishing uh, the day, we'll try to see the elimination matches. So uh, when we have like, let's say, RDU versus Life. Well, RDU versus Life, which we'll show anyway. <laughs> yeah. that, that was the thing last time at the Sunday 56, right? Life coach was emotionally crushed after the game when uh, RDU was drawing, if I remember correctly, uh, it was a peddler into PO, into PO, Doomguard, something like that. Yeah. Really good. Absolutely. All right, guys, so that was round one of the True Silver uh, Insomnia tournament, and uh, what a game that was. Uh, interesting decks interesting players as well. But now we are ready to go into the break, so give us some time when we prepare the second round of Swiss and let you know what's going on. So stay tuned.